Incendiary ammo is a pyromaniac's favorite ammunition. It can be used to light hunters, monsters, and world items ablaze. It also has a few quirks to it and several downsides so you need to be careful when you use it. Stick around to learn the ins and outs of this ammunition and when you might want to use it and when you should consider avoiding it. Quick call out to this video's partner Instant Gaming. It's a discount site where you can get your favorite games at significant discounts, including things like Ready or Not, Bellatro, or the new Buckshot Roulette. Recently I've been playing through the Outer Wilds which is an adventure puzzle game that takes place in a clockwork universe. Every so often the universe resets as you're trying to solve the mystery it presents. If you haven't played it before I highly recommend you check it out, but do your best to avoid spoilers on it. There are tons of fantastic aha moments in the game that are so much better if you go in unspoiled. Anyways, back to the video. So the most obvious part of incendiary ammo is that it lights hunters on fire. When you set an enemy on fire, their screen gets covered with flames and additional their max HP rapidly reduces. And if enough burns off, they're going to lose permanent bars of health. But keep in mind that advanced players are going to keep their cool and they're going to be able to push through the fight while on fire. So don't assume just because someone's burning that they're not going to be aggressive. A lot of people become more aggressive when you light them on fire. Sometimes it'll do it in the first hit and sometimes the second. There are a few factors that control this, so let's dig into it. Each ammo has a designated ignite range, and as far as I can tell, this syncs up to the same range where damage drop off begins. Here's a chart showing each gun that can currently use incendiary ammo and when its drop off begins. Meaning, if you shoot a hunter within this range, they'll ignite on the first shot. If you shoot them beyond the range, you'll only do some char damage. But if they already have that char damage, then the next shot with incendiary ammo is going to ignite them. Keep in mind that if someone has the salve skin trait, incendiary ammo will never ignite on the first shot. But let's take a quick look at some of these numbers. With the exception of the Bornheim silencer and the Winfield silencer, which have an ignite range of 10, all other compact and medium ammo weapons have an ignite range of 20. The long ammo pistols also fall into this range, like the uppercut and the sparks. The Spark Silencer is the only gun at 30 meters, then the rest of the long ammo rifles are going to be at the 40 meter range. Keep in note that the two slot variants match whatever gun they belong to. So the Mosin Obrez has an ignite range of 40 meters, and the Uppercut Precision has an ignite range of 20 meters, since it's still considered a pistol. Now when you hit someone with incendiary ammo, how much char damage you're going to deal is going to depend on a handful of factors. This chart lays some of that out. Big shout out to Micro from my Discord for gathering some of this information. All these damages in this section is before any actual burning damage is calculated. So starting off with the char damage you deal when your target is within the ignite range. You're going to deal between 16 and 18 damage based on the weapon. Compact ammo is usually about 16 damage, whereas long ammo is usually 18 damage. You can find the specifics in this spreadsheet here. Now, if you're shooting someone outside the ignite range, the shot's going to deal 9 to 10 charred damage, if they don't already have charred health. If they do have charred health, well, then it's going to do 14 to 15. Now, if your target is in deep water or within a choke bomb, the damage you deal is going to be between 11 and 13 within that ignite range. When someone gets hit with incendiary ammo or the moment they put the fire out, there's seven seconds until they start healing from it. Once they start healing, every two seconds, they're going to heal one of the charred health. This means even if you're using compact ammo outside of the ignite range, you still have 25 seconds where they'll still have charred health. So as long as you shoot them a second time in that time frame, you'll ignite them. Or another nasty use for this is if you bring a Sparks rifle, that means you have 25 seconds to get that second shot in to guarantee a one hit body shot. A couple observations here to be aware of. Charred damage does not decrease over distance once you're outside the ignite range. And the burn damage difference between compact ammo and long ammo is minimal at best. So on one hand, if you're hoping to ignite people, that gives you a reason to consider a compact ammo with a higher fire rate. But charring people's health also lets you take really good advantage of the extra damage on long ammo, especially something like the sparks. 
Your target only needs to be missing 1 HP for the sparks to be able to one-shot kill before damage drop-off, so consider which priority best fits your playstyle. Now, it's important I call out silencers. Now, it's important to be aware that when you're using incendiary ammo, your bullets look like tracer rounds, so they're going to be big orange streaks that lead back to you, making you easy to find. So if you're taking a silencer in particular, you need to decide if these downsides are worth the benefits that it gives you. In addition, incendiary ammo cannot penetrate walls. So you're also giving up that. And to pile on to the downsides, it also makes it really hard to fight around choke bombs or water because it makes it easy for your enemy's hunter to extinguish any flames. Not to mention rain can make it feel like you're swinging your gun around like a wet noodle. Not only does it extinguish enemy hunters as soon as you shoot them, it also prevents you from igniting barrels entirely, which is actually one of the cool things normally about incendiary ammo. If you shoot a red or yellow barrel, it doesn't just start the fuse on it, it blows it up instantly which can help really give you a strong advantage in a fight, even killing a hunter if they're close enough. Another environment trick is that you can light oil slicks on fire. Just shoot the ground on the oil and it'll take a moment, but it will ignite and light all along its trail. This can be used to better control compounds during fights. Now for AI, a couple things to consider. Other than meatheads, immolators, and water devils, you can one-shot any of the standard AI in the game. Just keep in mind, while they're burning, they're going to be screaming moderately loud. So if you're using incendiary on a silencer and thinking you're killing stuff silently, you're not. The good news is, you can still shoot them in the head and they'll die without screaming. As for bosses, it's great to use on the assassin and the spider for sure. Not only will you do the regular damage, you'll also do a little extra burning damage as they run around their compound on fire. It also deals the extra damage for Scrap Beak, but be aware that any of the tools or items he drops while on fire will become unusable. So if you want to make use of the pitchfork, med kit, or tool kits he drops, you're not going to want to use this ammo type. For the Butcher, do not use this. If you've extinguished him, it will relight him. Now for some synergies to think about when using this. You're lowering the enemy's max HP, so anything that can help you put pressure on that is going to be helpful. Higher damage rounds, like long ammo, are going to appreciate the lower max HP on the enemies. So are the bleeding custom ammos, like Flechette and Dum Dum. If you can ignite someone and then follow up with a shotgun with Flechette, they're going to be bleeding out noticeably faster. Another useful synergy is something with penetration. If you ignite a hunter and they try and take cover, then if you have something like long ammo, spitzer, or FMJ, you can then aim behind the cover they're taking to take them out while they're trying to put out the fire. Incendiary ammo's benefits are more situational than other ammo types. It's undoubtedly fun to light people on fire, but if you're taking a custom ammo for the fun of it, I would argue that explosive ammo wins on that front. Check out this video and learn how explosive ammo doesn't work how you would expect it to.